In this section we're going to focus on a pretty neat storage engine that's provided by MySQL and is enabled by default in the binary RPM distribution that we've installed for SUSE version 9.3. Although we're running 10, we're using the binaries compiled for 9.3. So this particular memory storage engine is called the memory engine or memory storage engine and it allows us to create table structures in memory which persist. And those table structures of course can house data for the duration of the server's uptime. So let's launch gedit to open our notes and we'll include a section called storage engines towards the bottom of the file. And there are many storage engines supported by MySQL as you know. We've been working primarily with the MyISAM non-transactional storage engine. This is the default storage engine. It's considered to be robust as well as fast and it's also considered to be very reliable. But MySQL supports a plethora of storage engines including memory storage engine which again allows us to create table structures in memory which is pretty neat. There are many uses or applications of in-memory storage engines. For example, you may have a result set or a set of data that you work with frequently and you want to be able to access that data as fast as possible. Well, you won't be able to access the data within any DBMS system any faster than data that's stored in memory. So by any means if you're able to commit the data that you're working with frequently to memory rather than to disk or long-term storage do so. So by default as mentioned memory is turned on as a storage engine option. Let's launch MySQL authenticating as the user root and once in We'll execute the command which reveals the, sh the storage engines that are supported by the version of MySQL that's installed on the system. And that's simply a show engines. So let's go ahead and execute that. And here are the engines. Now if we stretch this out, we'll be able to rerun it and have it fully justified so that we're not wrapping lines. Here are the engines that are turned on, the ones that say yes or support or default. So in the support column where you see yes or default means that the current binary provides support for the various engines that where you find default or yes in the particular row at that particular column position. So for example, my ISM is the default and we do have support for it. Otherwise we would have to have created our tables using other storage engines. The memory storage engine is provided by default it's hash based and allows us to store things in memory and again it's useful for temporary tables but we should differentiate clearly between me the memory storage engine and the temporary tables facilities so we'll just simply say note temporary tables structure do not persist however tables defined using the memory storage engine or we should say table structures so table structures because we must differentiate between the table structures and the actual contained data table structures defined using the memory storage engine do persist so what this means is as follows, as long as your MySQL instance is up and running and you've populated a table that is defined using the storage engine, that data will be accessible to all users on the system as long as the server is up and running. So let's also mention that memory based tables or we should say the data in memory based tables, so the data in memory based tables are available as long as the server and that's of course MySQLD is up and running so as long as it's up and running we'll have access to that data super so it's in memory and we can create structures that are similar to typical tables that we are able to define using other storage engines such as MyISAM as well as InnoDB with some restrictions but not too many. For example, auto incrementing columns are supported. Most types of fields are supported although blobs and text values are not supported so we should note that as well. Blob and text column types 
are not supported by memory based tables. And there are other restrictions that you should consult the MySQL documentation for. And again, this is all subject to change. With each passing release, more and more features and capabilities are added to MySQL. So some of the things that we mentioned may or may not exist in subsequent releases. But at least you'll have a baseline. So how do we go about creating tables that are in memory? Well, let's return to MySQL. And we know that we do have support. In the next section where we look at CSV based tables, we'll need to load a new module which will provide the access but for now we do have support so there are many ways we can go about doing it let's use the HR database because it's the database that we've worked most frequently with and we'll show tables all of the tables that are defined here are my ISAM based tables we could describe this particular database or describe each of the tables and you'll see that they're all basically my ISAM type tables but if you want to tie a, an in-memory table to the database uh, or your default database, simply create it using the typical create structure. So the, the syntax is going to resemble the following. It will be a create table and optionally you should specify an if not exists clause. So we'll go ahead and do that so that we don't or we gracefully exit if we do encounter a table with a similar name or a predefined table with the same name so let's go ahead and create it if it doesn't exist and we'll give it a name of employees underscore mem to indicate to us that it's a memory based table and let's say we want to store in this table a subset of information such as an auto incremented column such as int or ID that is which is of type int so we'll make ID type int and we'll make it auto incrementing and we'll set it as the primary key as well as we've done followed by perhaps first name which we'll set to var card. It's a good idea to match the field types to what's currently defined especially if you're going to select data from a, an already defined table. So let's describe the existing employees table and you'll see the current des description for the tables that are defined. Notice that F name and L name columns are varcar 20 so we'll go ahead and use the varcar 20 field type to be consistent. So that's varcar 20 followed by L name we'll make it also varcar 20 for consistency and if we wanted to store let's say another column from a different table we certainly could. Let's go ahead and set up one for salary. So we'll make salary decimal but we'll need to describe the salary or the pay scale that is pay underscore scale table to see what the particular type is and it's decimal 11 2 so let's go ahead and copy this entire type and replace what we've already typed in or append to what we've typed in so our temporary table looks like the following so far the syntax doesn't differ from the typical way you'd create a table However, towards the end of the creation of the table is where you specify that the engine is to be in memory. So we'll close out our table syntax, follow, or the field definition, so the structure of the table, followed by the option engine equals memory. And that's all we need to really specify to cause this table to be created in memory. Now again, once the server is up and running, the table gets created. And also what you'll notice on the file system is a new file called employees underscore mem dot frm. So let's make a note of that. Note creating an in memory table will create a file in the database directory named table underscore name dot frm. So it preserves the description of the table, the structure of the table in an frm form or an FRM file that is, or a form file. As we've mentioned, MySQL uses FRM files to represent each table's structure. And as a result, for an in-memory based table which persists once the server has been resumed or resumes operation, MySQL consults the FRM file to reconstruct the table, but not its data, not its contents. Because again, it's all in memory, so it's only available when the system's up and running. So let's go ahead and execute this command for create table and you'll see momentarily that we'll have a new file called employees underscore mem dot frm according to mysql we 
created the in-memory table in short time and now if we execute a show tables you'll see that a new table exists called employees underscore mem let's go ahead and describe it to ensure that it mimics what we've specified in our create statement and you'll see it contains one auto incrementing column f name last name and salary so we have the columns that we want let's go ahead and select star from employees underscore mem you'll see it contains no data now before we insert data into this particular temporary table let's open a separate window sun and we'll do so specifying roots password and we'll navigate over to var live mysql hr the default data directory for the hr database and after executing an lsltr you'll see that there's a new file called employees underscore mem dot frm a file against employees underscore mem.frm reveals that it's a MySQL table definition file. And if you attempt to look at the file using a typical ASCII-based pager such as less, you'll see that it tells you that it's binary, but sometimes you're able to decipher through everything some ASCII text. But again, it's binary and it's processed as fast as possible by the MySQL daemon when the server starts. So now we have this new table, what we need to do is commit data to it. So we're going to go ahead and perform a join. So let's go ahead and define a task which is to populate employees underscore mem table with data from employees and salaries or pay underscore scale that is tables we really want the salaries column so we'll go ahead and execute a select f name and now this is the default select that we're going to add to our insert statement so we'll prefix this with an insert statement so we'll select f name l name from and we're not done yet we need salaries as well salaries from employees comma pay underscore scale and this is the same join we've been performing all along where employees dot pay underscore scale ID is equivalent to pay underscore scale dot ID so this performs a join for us but we don't want to just select this information because it'll dump it to stand it out which is a screen if we were to go ahead and execute this you'll see it performs a typical join and this is this is the information that we want in the temporary table but it's currently echoed or was just recently echoed to the screen so that's of no use for example if we we're to go ahead and select from the temporary table you'll see no data is there so we'll prefix the select statement with an insert to cause the data to be submitted to the temporary table so let's insert into employees underscore mem and we'll specify the columns that we're interested in including f name l name and we'll specify the columns in the order in which we select them followed by salary now let's just go ahead and look at that structure again for our temporary table notice that the name is salary but we select salaries now let's go ahead and attempt to execute this insert statement and this will attempt to insert the data into employees underscore mem and before we could finish describing what it's going to do it's already done it with no warnings so again we've now selected from two separate tables performing a join and column names are irrelevant keep that in mind and we've inserted those three columns from the two tables into three columns in our temporary table which means if we go ahead and execute a select star from employees underscore mem from memory you'll see the result set and it returns very very quickly and seldom will you find that when you execute queries against in memory based tables that it takes more than zero seconds in other words it's usually immeasurable so here's our data set, but this data set again does not exist on disk, so when the server is stopped and restarted, the data won't exist. Now, there are ways to work around that, especially if you use this particular set of data frequently. You may be an HR person and frequently use F name, L name, and salary information amongst other columns. So with MySQL, if you specify, for example, let's go ahead and mention that note to enable MySQL to, or we should say MySQL D, to reinstate the data set or data set upon startup. 
do the following. And it's quite simple. One, define a text file with the previously defined SQL statement, or we should say SQL insert statement. So the statement that you see above right here is what you want to place into a text file that MySQLD will be able to access. And then two, modify etc my.cnf to include a directive that looks like the following init dash file is equivalent to the name of your file so we should specify file name or wherever you've specified your text based file with the insert statement and upon initiation mysql will populate the temporary table for you so that the data set that we're working with here will always be available every time you enter mysql or at least every time mysql starts another note we should also mention that all users have access to temporary tables that's just another note that's important so let's go ahead and shut purposely this mysql server We'll do so without disconnecting from the current window. So in a separate window where we are SUed in as root, let's simply execute an RC MySQL stop. This will stop the MySQL server. And once stopped, we'll then execute a start, all without returning to the client package. So we've restarted MySQL from the client package. If we go ahead and execute any query, such as a show process list, you'll see that it'll complain that the connection was broken and it's been now assigned a new connection ID of 1 which is fine however let's go ahead and execute a show table since we're still within the context of HR you'll see that the table has been recreated but guess what it contains no data let's go ahead and select star from employees underscore mem and you'll see it's empty and that's simply because the server was stopped and then restarted when MySQL stops it flushes or releases all holds on memory. Any memory spaces or addresses that were in use are released to the operating system to be allocated to other processes or to be at least stored in a reserve for allocation upon perhaps restart of MySQL or the request of another application in need of memory. So that data is gone. So again, you'd want to use the init file option to get to populate so that you can reuse it without having to rerun this insert statement every time. But after having rerun the statement, notice our data is back and available, ready to be used. And also, when you stop MySQL, notice that in this particular directory, we'll wait for it to stop here, you'll see that in the varlib MySQL HR data directory, that the employees underscore mem.frm file persists. You'll see also if we psax grep MySQL that it isn't running just the client package and our grep that we just executed but the server isn't running but the description of the temporary table persists also there is nothing special about the name or required about the name underscore mem it's not a requirement we simply call the table with a suffix of underscore mem so that we are able to identify that it's an in memory base table but we could have easily just executed a show create table which would have told us quite quickly that it's a memory based table. Let's go ahead and restart MySQL and from the client section we'll go ahead and try to select star you'll see it's empty so let's go ahead and populate it again and again if we execute a show create table for employees underscore mem you'll see that it includes the key description of the engine that's in use and that's the memory base engine so show create table will tell you how the table was created and it's based on the memory storage engine so that's a little bit about storing values in memory memory can be very useful if you want to load a lot of data into memory or just data that you reference quite often rather than have the server hit indexes or hit the disk or the table data files on disk you can have it query memory of course this is all based on your system having ample memory for use but modern systems do and as a result we should take advantage of that fact now next we're gonna look at the CSV based storage engine which is another neat way of storing data within MySQL